And we are back with another video where I'm answering answers, well, I'm answering questions that you guys have sent me for on the spot. The next question comes to us from the comic strip three. OTS, what is your favorite superhero and can you show your face? You're really, the really the best. Really. Really. Thank you, comic strip three. Favorite superhero of all time? My top three, you guys probably know by now. Number one, Superman by far. No competition. Nothing tops Superman for me. Superman. Number two, very closely, very close, Batman. Number three, Spider-Man. Favorite superheroes. Used to really like Wolverine, but that kind of, I lost interest when Wolverine took over every single movie and cartoon that he was in. Um, the your face part again we've already touched base on that so we'll uh, we'll move on to the next question um, the next question comes to us from the super wolf 07 speaking of which why can't you show your face are you a robot or something no actually my face is made of cheese cheddar cheddar cheese little holes you know sometimes I pick away at my face and I eat it okay that's just disgusting um, I am not a robot. I can tell you 100% as far as I know, just checking my heart, yes, I am definitely not a robot. Even though robots can have hearts. Cyborgs, it does exist. Next question comes to us from Lazy Kid Reviews. OTS, hey Spot, how's it going? It's going well, Lazy Kid. How are you? School's good? That's good. Everything going well around the house? Yes? That's good. That's good as well. It says, I haven't made any videos for a while, I know, but that's because I'm kind of rebooting Lazy Kid this summer. Anyways, my question for you is, if you made your own Spider-Man movie trilogy, what villains would be in the movies? I would be likely the type, if we imagine that Amazing Spider-Man didn't exist and let's we're restarting the franchise. By the way, Amazing Spider-Man I loved, and I'm looking forward to the sequel. But I probably would follow the same suit as um, as Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man. I wouldn't have Green Goblin as the main, as the first villain. I think we should kind of build that up slowly, let it stew for a bit, and I would probably have Green Goblin as either the villain in Part Two or the villain in Part Three. I would even maybe wait till Part Three and really, really build it up. And I'm really glad that Joker wasn't the villain in the first Batman Nolan movie. Um, for a first villain, for a first villain in a Spider-Man movie, I probably would have gone with. I'd want to pick a. I want to pick a villain that is well known enough that people would would just know the character, and I wouldn't go too obscure. This is kind of silly me saying this. I probably would go with Mysterio as the first villain. I probably would. A little ridiculous? Probably. It's possible. But I'd have Spider-Man. And then maybe, you know, this guy, Mysterio, it sets up Spider-Man. It's possible. Or I'd have Mysterio in the second one. Trying to think of any other significant characters that I'd... I definitely would want to have Doc Ock in, in it. And I always thought Larry Drake. He's he's too old now. But I always thought Larry Drake, who played Dr. Giggles, and he was also in Durant. He was Durant in the Dark Man series. I always thought he would have been a perfect um, uh, Doc Ock. I don't know. I just always thought he'd make a good Doc Ock. You know what? I would probably do Dr. Octopus... One, the second one, I would probably do, oh, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. First one, I would do Doc Ock, and we'd establish that Norman Osborn is in the background doing something. In the second one, I'd have two Spider-Man villains, and I know that is always a bad thing, but I would have Mysterio, and I'd have Kraven the Hunter. And I'd have it where Spider-Man, at the end of the movie, is stuck in some sort of warehouse or some sort of abandoned carnival warehouse and Mysterio is distorting what he's seeing and while this is happening Craven is is hunting him 
you know, sp so Spider-Man could peek around the corner and Craven like tries to slash at him with a knife or something like that, or you know, he's using things to try to snare Spider-Man. I think that would be a good mix. I think Mysterio and Craven the Hunter. Mysterio would distort what Spider-Man is seeing that he has to rely on his his spider senses, and then you'd have Craven who is trying to outmatch and and find and possibly kill Spider-Man for his trophy, his ultimate trophy. Then in the third one, I would do Green Goblin, as because he's been established now in the first, I would have established him in the second, and in the third one would be the the big reveal of Green Goblin. So that's what that's what I would do. Lazy kid reviews. Thank you for your question, by the way. Next question comes to us from Fer Ferrioli's. Ferrioli's he says, "When can we see your face?" We covered that, so I'm just gonna kind of say reference the other uh, questions for that down below. Um, next question comes to us from uh, M U I S V E R R I E T O T S. Why are you the best? Um, I don't know if anyone can really answer that the question as to why they themselves are the best. I don't personally see it. I don't think I, I by no means in, at any in any way do I consider myself a gay. I consider myself a, a relatively good reviewer, but I don't consider myself by any stretch to be the best. I thank you for saying that. Um, if you were to say why are you the best, I might say it's probably something that's in my water. It's the it's the the water I'm drinking. It's it's probably the worst answer, just the worst answer. But thank you, thank you to your very profound question. Next question comes to us from Sound Out Twelve. What is your favorite figure from 2012? Kind of already touched base on that. A couple of figures, you know. Again, I really really loved. Uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, Friday 13th Part 4, but in the meantime, I thought Friday 13th Part 3 from NECA was a great figure. Um, Combat Gizmo was another one of my favorites. The, the Ash figure from NECA was also a great figure. Um, and uh, Donatello, or really the Ninja Turtles as a whole, I thought were great figures. Donatello, I would say, probably being my favorite of those four. Next question comes to us from Zach Lachance. Congrats on the new channel. Thank you, Spot. I am a subscriber. Fantastic. Welcome aboard. What is your favorite 80s movie of all time? That is so easy for me to answer. The Karate Kid. The Karate Kid is my favorite 80s movie of all time. Runners Up, Labyrinth, Never Ending Story, Goonies, Monster Squad. Maybe Adventures in Babysitting somewhere in there as well. But I would definitely say Karate Kid is my favorite 80s movie of all time. That, that was a very easy one to answer. Next question comes to us from Awesome Steve 23 OTS, who do you think is the best toy company? Right now, I would say it's a toss-up between NECA and LEGO. And you're thinking, Spot, those are so completely different from one another. I am so impressed with the licensing that uh, LEGO has picked up lately. Between the DC Universe, which they've had for a while, the Marvel, of course, uh, Harry Potter, they've had for a while, Lord of the Rings, um, and now the Ninja Turtles, I've been so impressed with Lego lately. So impressed. The Ninja Turtles, again, is probably my favorite Lego series to this date, I think, probably right now. Yeah, I love them. NECA, I mean, I have nothing bad to say about NECA. I mean, NECA makes fantastic figures. I'm so stoked for future waves of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I'm really hoping we get Halloween figures down the road. Oh, I wish they would just, I would, wish they would make those. Um, next question comes to us from Eric Law. OTS, do you have children? I don't. I have children, but they're, they walk on all fours and they use litter boxes. Spot, you're a horrible father. No, don't worry, they're cats. They are cats. I'd love to have kids. I just don't have kids just yet. The next question comes to us from Liam Dolan. OTS, what are you hoping for a figure to be made into... Oh, what are you hoping for, for a figure to be made into a figure for 2013? I am holding out hope, and this will never happen. 
I'm holding out hope that NECA goes back and does properties of some of the uh, scream error of characters. Like, no, we've already gotten a ghost face. I would love to see a fisherman. I'd love to see the hoodied killer from Urban Legend. I would even love to see Cherub from the lesser known Valentine. Those would be awesome. But the one I really would love to see more than anything else, and it will never happen, is a Harry Warden from My Bloody Valentine. I would love a Harry Warden from My Bloody Valentine. Uh, thank you to your question for your question, Liam. Next question comes to us from comment thirteen thirty seven OTS. Do you think of sh do you think of showing your face? Again, we kind of touched base on that one. Um, next question comes to us from Lawfulness. He says, OTS, on an older segment of On The Spot, there was a question asked about your employment. When you gave your answer, you didn't sound too thrilled about it. Was it something that you sort of fell into, or did you always have a dream career that you were not able to experience? Thanks for reading, and take care. Um, it, it was just for me. I mean, you know, we all do it. We, Well, the majority of us. There's many of us that love what they do. I mean, for some of us, though, we work at places where we're not 100% happy with the job that we do. And I know some people would say, well, you should do what you love doing. I am obviously working towards what my dream job would be if it existed. Um, in the meantime, I just kind of work where I am working now. I kind of put up with the BS and some of the horrible co-workers, not all of them. If you are watching any of them, I'm not referring to you. You guys know who I'm talking about. Some of the employees that I work with aren't the greatest to, to deal with. But, you know, it's a job. I make money. I come home. I feed my children. It gives me clothes to put on my back and food to put on the table. So my dream job would really, I'd love to be part of the creative process, advertising, that kind of stuff. If there's any companies at all listening and you would love to employ me, I am your humbled slave. I shouldn't say slave, but I'm certainly open for any new ideas. In the meantime, I am definitely working towards um, potential career changes, maybe down the road. But in the meantime, working for a living, putting bacon on the table, bringing home the bacon, frying up the bacon, living like an adult. It's not always the funnest, but living like an adult. We all do it eventually. I know, we always we do it eventually. Um, that actually is the last question as well that comes to us from Lawfulness. So I'm going to wrap this up here. Certainly stay tuned, guys. There's more on the spot heading your way. Stay tuned.